I think finding a destination yeah. is the hack, like figuring out what that destination needs to be, and then you can build the path there. So I think that is the the most challenging part. But once you figure out that destination, everything else gets a little bit easier because you can start to build that path and figure out what needs to happen to get there. Um, sort of what you've been talking about with map making. I think the challenge is find the destination, build the path. What is your compass that's telling you when you're going the wrong way um, or when you should continue as? And so that destination is, is definitely the hack. Yeah. It's not gonna be easy <laughs> to figure it out. Welcome to the Culture Gooder podcast with Stephen Lease and Sean Tinney. This podcast is a behind the shades look at creating and changing culture inside of Gooder sunglasses. You can live with the status quo, you can challenge the status quo, or you can do what we do at Gooder and status the quo challenge. Yo, you're listening to a six part series where I interview all of our department heads. At Gooder, we call our department heads flock stars. Enjoy. We have a very special guest today, my good friend, colleague, and professionalism mentor, mm -hmm. uh, Kelly Puckett. Kelly, how are we doing? Great. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're welcome. So Kelly is the flock star of our energy herd into the outside world. Are you known as our CMO? I think that's how I loosely refer to you as. How yeah, do you, you internally say? it's chief of energy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, externally it is a marketing role. So CMO. Got it. So I'm going to get into Kelly's role and or her team details uh, in a second. But first, tell us an interesting story about you growing up that led to the person you are today. Yeah, for sure. I think the thing that has uh, affected me most um, and really built me into the person I am is growing up with a sister with Down syndrome. Yeah. Uh, just watching how hard everything was for her, it would be impossible for me not to give my best and show up with my best self. Um, Prefontaine has a quote that's, to give anything less than your best is to sacrifice the gift. And I truly believe that, and that's because of her. Yeah, that's cool. When did you come to that realization? I think pretty early I was, yeah. I was two when my sister was born and, um, you know, she's my best friend and, uh, just such an amazing attitude and spirit through everything. And I think subconsciously I realized that pretty quickly, but yeah. obviously as I get older, um, and reflect back, I can, I can see how much it's affected who is, I am as a person. Yeah, for sure. I think the older we get and the more mature we get, I for sure have some moments recently where I'm like, oh, that's where that came from. For sure. That's cool. All right. You just told us about your uh, lame title and fun title, but talk about your department, all the teams in there. What do they do and what's your primary focus? So we are the marketing team. Yep. And within our herd, we have the media team who is responsible for all of our paid and organic initiatives. So that includes performance, awareness marketing, that includes PR, that includes social media, and that includes partnerships. And then we have our community team, which is all of our community managers who are really charged with creating and building community within their verticals. Yeah. So that's like run, bike, beast, which is our CrossFit space, golf, and then summit, which is all things outdoors. And then finally, we have our cabana team and they are uh, responsible for leading on managing our Abbott Kinney storefront. Um, and we really looked at that as a marketing instrument as well. It's on one of the busiest retail locations in the country. And so that is another opportunity for us to showcase our brand, increase awareness. And also it's a great place to house any sort of activations that we have. Yeah. What are, what are y'all focusing on this year? What are your prim primary focuses? Uh, awareness is still going to be yeah. a huge focus for us. Um, and we're doing that mostly through our media tactics, but also increasing awareness through our different verticals and the touch points we have there, whether through partnerships and sponsorships, we're really trying to dial in everything we do with our performance marketing. That is sort of, as you would say, our vegetables, yep. uh, that allows, vegetables. yeah, that allows us to have our dessert. Uh, so we're really trying to dial in that process because that is a great way for us to bring in revenue. Um, and in general, just leveling up everything we are currently doing. So, you know, we have a sharper ax and can reach as many people as possible. Yeah. What are, it was a, is it community connection and eyeballs? Exactly right. Oh, I got it. You got it. Uh, that's the, uh, our three focuses. Our three focuses. Yeah. So what's your day to day look like? So looking at it from a week standpoint, similar to you, I have my weekly review on Monday. I like to stay as ahead of things as I can so that I feel calm and collected during the week as things, you know, the unexpected takes place. Uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, uh, as we all do, is about creating connection with the team, 
any of the weekly meetings that we have, attending those next actions there. And then I try to reserve Wednesday and Friday for bigger projects yeah. that require deeper thinking. Um, and so that's sort of what the layout of my week looks like. But I try to go into it feeling as calm as I can so that I can handle anything that comes up. The uh, the other day I was, there were some other flock stars talking outside my office and I had like just sent out a loom about something and they're like, fucking Kelly's already given feedback <laughs> on this. And I laughed, I came out, I was like, hey, uh, what you all don't know is I tip Kelly out be for being on this shit right away uh, just to keep everybody else in line. And so that's why I refer to you as my uh, professional mentor because like you are, like you're on it. Maybe speak to why being on it just actually, do you, is it, does it lower stress? Do you like love it? Does it give you energy? Like, like, cause, cause I think you feed off it. W what, what's your thoughts? There's definitely a peace of mind element to that yeah. in knowing that, especially if it's like a five minute task and I can cross that off my list. I want to do that right away so that I can reserve that time for, like I said, the deeper thinking projects. Preparation is extremely important to me. I feel so much more comfortable if I've prepared for something. Yeah. So taking the time to do that so I can walk into something confidently. Again, I think it all comes down to peace of mind and having that peace of mind is everything for me. I don't like to feel panicked or stressed out about things. So that's a big part of it. Yeah, I actually think usually the most creative people I know are the most organized people I know. I try, definitely try to be as organized as I can be, but I think it's also the second part of it is just doing it. Yeah. And just moving on things. And I definitely have an urgency to do things. And so that definitely drives it beyond just being organized. So what's the funnest part about your role right now? And what's the hardest part? I would say the same thing for both. Um, <laughs> Let's hear it. I would say I love the challenge, the day-to-day -day challenges working here as we are growing so quickly. So I love the problem solving. Uh, I think that's also the toughest part, but the hard is what makes it really great and rewarding when we're able to work through a problem and come out with a solution. And of course, you know, what works today doesn't work tomorrow. So always rethinking the way we're doing things is really exciting and also very challenging. Is there a particular problem you can think of that you're just, you are really struggling to solve? I think looking to the end of the year, right? Where do I want to be at the end of the year? Where does our, where does our team need to be at the end of the year is probably the toughest thing to solve right now. And I would like to get ahead of any challenges that might arise. So I think thinking forward is always the biggest challenge, yeah. especially thinking that far ahead. Um, but that's really important in order to set us up for success and looking at the fractures that might be there right now. What are things that not, what are not, not what are the short term fixes, but what are the long term fixes? Um, so that's something I think that probably challenges me most is I can see little things that probably be could become bigger problems if I don't start figuring out solutions now. Yeah. And layer on top of that, there's the, you know, seeing how, figuring out how to get to the end of the year and then keeping a team, your team pointed in the same direction. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's a big team. You know, we all have these large teams who do have very separate objectives, but at the same time, how do we all work together to get to where we need to be? And I think that's actually one thing the energy team has done really well is like they're collaborating so much, whether it be the community managers and media working towards a common goal of how do we increase awareness in the space, the community managers working with the cabana team. That is one thing I think we've done really well is just as a complete team working together to try to reach some collective goals. Yeah. And so making sure that we continue to do that is going to be extremely important. Do you have any hacks for people out there how to do this? Well, I, in terms of thinking forward. Yeah. And, 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 and getting your team pointed in the same direction. I think finding a destination yeah. is the hack, like figuring out what that destination needs to be. And then you can build the path there. So I think that is the the most challenging part. But once you figure out that destination, everything else gets a little bit easier because you can start to build that path and figure out what needs to happen to get there. Um, sort of what you've been talking about with map making. I think the challenge is find the destination, build the path. What is your compass that's telling you when you're going the wrong way um, or when you should continue as? And so that destination is, is definitely the hack. 
Yeah. It's not going to be easy <laughs> to figure it out. Yeah, for sure. So you spent a lot of your life at Paramount Pictures. Uh, how has that benefited you in your current role? In a lot of ways, I think uh, it taught me a lot about multitasking, managing multiple projects at once, managing budgets, managing different personalities uh, was definitely a, a big takeaway. How to confidently go into a big room uh, is something that I learned uh, from my experience there. How to stay authentic to myself in a space that's actually very challenging to do that. Um, and, and it did lend itself to some really fun creative projects, uh, that really challenged me to think differently. And so I think those were all some really amazing takeaways. Yeah. I always joke that at our old office, uh, when you first started, we had a thing called the box office, which was a bunch of boxes of sunglasses and people would just meet between there. Cause we barely had any meeting rooms. And I'm like, well, Kelly went to, from working on the box office to the box office, <laughs> yeah, which was actually an amazing transition. Yeah. Uh, talk a little bit about the, the, actually the upcoming talk you're giving, which kind of like hinges on this mindset of, you know, no matter where you go, there you are. For sure. I think it also is a lot about what you talk about, which is enjoying the work over the results. Yeah. And I think I'd reached a point where I was not enjoying the work. And so I wanted to be somewhere where I was loving what I was doing. Um, but a lot of that is an attitude shift and being open to the possibility of doing something differently or the possibility of actually falling in love with what you're doing. And that was a conscious decision I made when I left that I was going to be very open to wherever this took me and enjoy the process and dive in head first. And I've, you know, never looked back. Yeah. What's something small and obscure you love about Gooder? I really enjoy the lunchtime talks. Oh, yeah. Because every time we have one, I learn something incredible about the people I work with. And we have such talented people that work here, who, whether they are writers or directors, playwrights, dancers. It's really incredible. And I'm always blown away. And feel like I have to step up my game after every time I leave one of these talks. But that's a really cool thing that we do. And it does build that connection. Yeah, for sure. That's a good one. So for our listeners out there, we have a staff meeting. I know this year, about every other Tuesday. So TWC and it's a rotating host. So everybody hosts it at least once at Gooder. And part of hosting TWC is if you want, you can give a lunchtime talk on whatever you want. And so it, it could be a book report on you know, oh, I'm into playing guitar, here's about that. Or I grew up in this country, here's what that was like. It is actually, you get peaks into people's lives that are incredible. It's amazing. What's, some, what's one of the ones that sticks out to you right now? I think Katie Shea, I had no idea that she was a writer yeah. and that she had written plays that had actually been picked up. So that was just something I didn't know. And I was really amazed by that. And obviously she's transitioning to a role where she's going to be writing. Yeah. So that was super fascinating to me. And um, yeah, I just, I'm constantly in awe. Yeah, it's really cool. And I think the best thing about it is the open format. And so it can be whatever people want. Yes. I mean, we've had people talk about um, how they got out of a financial situation yeah. to their love of pizzas to a talent that they have outside of Gooder. So it's really incredible. Yeah, it's really cool. So we obviously share a love for professionalism. Uh, why is professionalism uh, important to you? Striving for excellence is important to me, um, which is really giving the best to my abilities. Yeah. That looks different for everybody. Uh, a big part of that, which is what I talked about earlier, is prep preparation. Yeah. And uh, failing to prepare is preparing to fail. And so as long as I go into something knowing I gave my best, then I walk away again with that peace of mind. Um, and so that's really important to me, that yeah. peace of mind. The peace of mind is, is a very real thing. There might be Wayne Gretzky. I think the quote is, uh, practice doesn't make perfect practice makes prepared mm -hmm. and there is a wonderful feeling when you can fall back on all the preparation you did uh, maybe speak to is there anything in recent memory where basically because you prepared it was just it was a cakewalk I spent a lot of time preparing for the culture talk I did yeah. on 
the shoelaces, which was really about professionalism and preparation to the point where I was running with my partner and I was actually just reciting it without the slides. (laughs) And I had it, you know, that to that point, it was memorized that much. And that's a great feeling when you can walk because, you know, you're going to have nerves and all these other things. So if I can do that while I'm running without even any reference, then I know I can walk into a room and do that without a problem. Oh, that's cool. Uh, I remember hearing a story once that the guys from Outcast used to run and rap their songs um, so that when so that to prepare to show up and like bring it uh, at a concert like that was like how they they got like the energy to be able to rap and perform at the same time. That's amazing. Yeah, it's a really cool, it's really cool. You took quite a leap moving from Paramount to Gooder. So you know why and then what was it like a uh, Gooder 2019? I mean, you were probably in. Employee 30, 35 would be my guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, as I mentioned, I was definitely ready for a change. And when you called, I immediately knew this was something I had to do. And so there was just this kind of moment where opportunity, the opportunity arose. I was in the right place to make that change. And then when I came over to Gooder, there was definitely a little bit of a culture shock. Yeah. As I was deep programming from, you know, a decade of being in this very uh, corporate environment, I actually found myself a little bit emotional for the first few months (laughs) and I didn't quite know why. And I think it was because of that, you know, deprogramming. Um, But it's really amazing when I look back on that time and how young we were as a company and just the connections you build with people and some of those memories are some of my fondest memories. Yeah. And, uh, recently, uh, one of our, our coworkers shared a picture with me of me, uh, basically taking a call in a closet and it just made me really nostalgic for yeah. that time. It was really, really fun. Yeah. It was, I mean, you know, yeah, I'm have a biased view, uh, cause Gooder is obviously my baby, but I, I like hearing other people's point of view because yeah, I, there was for sure some hard grind elements, but everything I remember is like, like I remember, I have fond memories only. Absolutely. They were great times and these are great times too. And it's just a reminder to be present in these moments because it's going to look completely different a month from now and a year from now. So it's a great reminder to enjoy the moment. Yeah. Whenever, I mean, the only constant at Gooder is change. Mm-hmm. <laughs> of, of like, oh, you you haven't been here long enough. You don't know. This is a, once a year, we just change everything completely. That's for sure. <laughs> I've actually been here not for four years, but for 28 years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it is, it is a, there is a dog years. Like, you know, one year at Gooder. I, th- I think it's actually getting slower where I think, yeah, probably 2019 was like seven years and maybe 2020 was like six years. And I think right now it's a, we're about three or four. Yep. Yeah. Uh, uh, Last year, you finished the Badwater. You finished Badwater, which is a 135-mile ultra in Death Valley. So what's the one thing you learned about that that helped you be a better leader? Ooh, so many things, actually. Uh, I think I used the quote, which is a Coach Wooden quote. Uh, it's what you learn after you know everything that counts. And specifically with ultra distances, I think I believe I know a decent amount going into it. And then everything I think I know completely <laughs> goes out the door. Um, There's a lesson in managing the moment and controlling the controllables. There were a lot of things that went wrong and you can't let that affect your long-term goal, uh, which should be just finishing. Your number one goal should be (laughs) finishing and everything else comes secondary. Um, But managing the moment, controlling the controllables, what do I need right now? And then there is this thing of slow, relentless forward motion. And if you just keep moving forward, you will get there. And so similar to anything in life, sometimes you have to grind it out and just get to the finish line. And that is enough sometimes. Um, So those were some big lessons from that race where, you know, many things went wrong. Um, (laughs) If you look at it that way, or it's, hey, how do I just manage it? Uh, Oh, how long in the race were, were you questioning every decision made? Like, like, I think the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> driving to the start line. Yeah, driving to the start line was definitely a big moment. Uh, I don't think I've ever been felt so overwhelmed as standing at the start line with like 50 other people in the dark, 125 degrees outside. Somebody was playing the national anthem. It was a very 
bizarre kind of out of body moment. And at least once I started running, you know, you do get into somewhat of a rhythm yeah. and you do start to get into that place of managing it. But there was some prolonged suffering where I definitely had many pity parties and had to pull myself out of that. <laughs> but uh, Yes, I can imagine. I, I always tell people I've only done one hundred miler and uh, mile 38, I hit rock bottom, like completely my legs locked up. I fell down face first in the dirt and got through and finished. And I always still to this day will think when everything was really bad of like, I've been in way worse situations than this mile 38 of my, uh, hundred miler comes to mind. Do you have that mentality? Like, like in the real life where you're like, I've been through way harder situations. than Oh, this. absolutely. I have a few specific memories that I have just for that occasion that I can pull. And also I've also been very intentional at times about training for things, putting myself in those situations yeah. and teaching myself to be calm in the suffering because that is the only way you learn to embrace that. And so I definitely have had some tactics of, hey, I need to go do this and learn to just live in this moment and not freak myself out. I love be, be calm in the suffering. <laughs> it's important. <laughs> so tell our listeners about funts and uh, why you believe they're so important to the brand. So it's a made up word. Yeah. Uh, that, <laughs> like a lot of words here. Yeah, like a lot of words. It's fun and stunts. It's basically a marketing activation. And again, to to draft off of what you've always said, it is the dessert after you know taking our vegetables, but it is a really fun and meaningful way to engage with our consumers and actually create that in-person connection. And I think we do still try to attach some KPIs and be clear about what we're trying to get out of it. So it's not it's not 100% a dessert, but it, you know, we have some KPIs we're pushing towards, but it is really, we're being intentional about creating connection and hopefully getting some buzz out of it. And we, you know, getting a placement in an ad week or ad age would be amazing. But first and foremost, it's about creating that connection. Yeah. You, uh, last year, we embarked on our first uh, awareness campaign. So, you know, a giant effort and, Kelly and her and Travis, one of her flock leaders presented like, Hey, here's how we're going to do this. We're going to spend, um, you know, more money we've ever spent on media. And here's how we're going to make this come to be. And it was a really detailed plan. And at the very end, I was like, Oh, and also here's basically two cherries. Uh, and one of them was Carl Georgia. And one of them was New York city pop-up. Mm -hmm. And I've used this story many times where I've told people, well, when you come with this amount of detail on all this, you know, when you prepare all these vegetables, it's so much easier to green light a fun thing on top of it. Was that intentional in your like, like, was that intentional for you? Like being like, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to do all this. And then I'm going to get this other weird stuff on the side. Absolutely. We had to figure out all the important <laughs> details and uh, processes we needed to build for the awareness campaign and making sure that we were, bringing in as many eyeballs as possible. And then that gave us space to start ideating around something fun we could do. And we have such a fun, absurd brand that we want to be able to showcase that. And I think the best way to do that is do something in person and, you know, do one of these funds. Um, but yes, definitely we had to figure out all the other pieces of this first. And there was a lot of pieces that had to be figured out. Uh Tell our listeners about, about Carl, Georgia, because I'm not sure if we've ever talked about this on the podcast. So Carl, Georgia is a town of around 200, population 200, but it happens to also be a pretty highly trafficked road, commuter road yeah. that, you know, drivers are taking to get to whatever city. And this town happens to have multiple billboards within it. So we thought, why don't we just take over this town, buy out all the billboards <laughs> and give glasses <laughs> to all 200 people living within Carl, Georgia. And then I think one of the most amazing uh, text messages I've received in my life was the rep we were working with telling us that the mayor of Carl, Georgia was very interested in working with us. <laughs> mayor, Brock. Um, mayor Brock. So that's like the fun yeah. things we get to do as part of work, you know, working for this brand. And that's what makes all the other hard work. Um, worth it because we get these really fun moments and fun projects to work on that yeah. are just, they're just fun. They're just fun. And, yeah. and that's okay. I think that sometimes, uh, it was really, it was a really amazing being there in Carl, Georgia and, and, and 
when you free yourself, like we're just going to do this fun fucking absurd thing. It means you can just, it, it's so much more enjoyable uh, than trying to actually justify this crazy uh, uh, fun, right? Absolutely. I also, I love the pitch and yeah. I love <laughs> convincing everyone to join in on this and doing all the work to get everybody excited about it. So that part's really fun as well. But those two projects actually were more more work than Big you know you would ever imagine. I'm just sure. all the organization that went into it. So um, definitely, still a ton of logistics and work that goes into pulling off even the the funds. Well, we make fun look easy, and I think that's uh, that's a gift, and sometimes it's a curse. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the Culture Gooder podcast. Uh, in the context of the workplace, what does the word culture mean to you? I think it is the personality that. Uh, sort of dictates how I feel about my work, right? It's it's what makes me love being here. And I think like a relationship, you want to find a personality that aligns with who you are, where you share the same values. So I think it's the personality of the workplace. Yeah. What are the three common characteristics of people who thrive at Gooder, in your opinion? I think enjoying the work over the results yep. is definitely a big one. Um, I think professionalism is a big aspect of it. And think just hard working. Yeah. You know, everyone here works so hard and enjoys working hard uh, and being professionals. And I think those are really important aspects of anyone who's going to succeed here. Yeah. I think that uh, an, uh, a word I would use often is uh, also kind or generous. Like mm -hmm. People are very generous with like their time and their energy, energy to each other. Authentically. Yeah. Authentically kind. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Absolutely. Talk about Squawk Talks, uh, what that is, where that, what that is, uh, how it came to be, and you know what we have planned this year. We all have purpose projects yeah. uh, at Gooder, and mine is a Squawk Talks, which is a speaker series that happens now monthly. Um, and it started out of this desire to bring in more outside voices into our company. Yeah. I think... I've always been really lucky and I think this was something working at Paramount too, where I always had all these interactions with whether it was companies coming in like a meta or a YouTube and learning from them. And I learned so much from having those interactions. So one piece of it was just to wanting to bring in more um, knowledge and opportunities for people to learn. And then also just learning and hearing different perspectives Something that's important to me is inclusion. So how do we bring in more voices and opportunities for even speakers who've never spoken in front of an audience before? A lot of our speakers are speaking for yeah. the first time. And so it's something they've wanted to do and it's giving them an opportunity as well. So I think inclusion is sort of the common thread through all of yeah. it. And um, excited to also just, I want to expose people to our company. And I think being inside this company is how you really truly see who we are. Yeah. And so experiencing that and who knows what opportunities might come from that. Are we doing one a month this year? Is that the plan? One a month. Yeah. Uh, I think what I'm really excited about is uh, quickly speak to the, the panel we're doing in March. We're doing a women in leadership panel, yeah. which is really exciting. So we've been chatting with women in different careers and their experiences and it's been really inspiring to hear from them. So it's going to be different and that it'll be more of a panel style, asking questions, allowing people to get up and ask questions throughout it. Um, and, you know, just hear how important it is to have women in leadership. Yeah. Uh, it's very cool. I'm, 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 I, I love the Squawk Talks. I think it's a really beautiful way to uh, bring outside voices in. And then, I mean, I actually really just value the, the kind of like watching the people at Gooder, watching the, the talk. And you, you kind of just get a sense for why is this talk important to these people? It's just a really cool kind of like cross share that, that you've created. Sure. And everyone's going to resonate with someone differently, right? And for some people, someone may really speak to them. And yeah. for others, it may be someone else. So that has been really cool to see who... Uh, really responds to certain speakers. And um, that's definitely one of the most rewarding parts of it. Yeah, it's, I mean, I've been to a bunch of conferences and not every speaker blows your mind, but there are, what do you need, what do you need in that moment? What do you need to hear? And right, just being okay with 
it's it's never going to be everything to everyone, but if it's impactful to a small group every month, a small different group especially, it's it's a huge win. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So we value feedback here at Gooder. Mm -hmm. So give me some feedback on something uh, I can be better at. I would say be more present in the moment. Yeah. Um, whether that's just allowing yourself to enjoy something, holding that feedback. <laughs> I think you've done a really good job with your looms and doing that. But um, I think just allowing yourself to be present in that moment and then whatever you need to do afterwards, yeah. you can do that, uh, I think is my feedback. Yeah. The, is it, do you have a particular, uh, a particular example in mind? PWC. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. It's, it is a, you are, you are not wrong in the, the, I, I for sure struggle with, I remember an early gooder stock going back to my place and mountain was in the car. Who's our COO. And, uh, I was talking about something. I'm, I'm like, that was amazing. It's probably the best gooder stock we had. And also there's a thousand things wrong. And he's like, I'm sitting back here just smiling. Like, oh, I thought that thing was perfect. And then I'm sitting there, I'm like, I should enjoy this more. Yeah. It's a, yeah, no, I, you are hundred percent correct. I grew up playing soccer and I played for my best friend's dad who coached us. And our dads were both very, had a lot of feedback after yeah. games, you know, <laughs> there was a lot of feedback during games, a lot of feedback. And I remember my best friend, Aaron finally said to her dad, Hey dad, let's talk tomorrow. Yeah. And I thought that was, and they kind of came to this agreement where he wouldn't just be in that game and be there for that. And then the next day after he'd collected himself, they'd have that conversation. Also, she was in a better place yeah. because she wasn't feeling, you know, all of the emotions from that game. And I always thought that was a really cool thing. I never got there with my dad, but got to that point. We always had the immediate feedback and, you know, sometimes that led to some arguments in the car, but <laughs> <laughs> No, I like that. Actually, I know a way I can do, I can actually uh, attempt to be better at that. All right. So we're uh, going to end the lightning round. That's actually not really a lightning round, but we'll, we'll go through it as quickly as possible. So if you could, or if I could wave a magic wand and change one thing at Gooder, what would it be? Slowing down time. Can you do that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a magic wand. So I'll try. Uh, why is that important? I think it is. It is what you're already starting to create, which is space. Yeah. And it is, it is both good and bad, right? Time goes incredibly quickly here. Yeah. Um, and sometimes I look back at the month of December and I'm like, where did that go? Yeah. It just moves so quickly. So sometimes I think it also is that desire for me to be more present in the moment. Yeah. And I'm, I also struggle with that because I'm always thinking forward. So time is, is tough. We, we move quickly. Yeah. No, for sure. I would, I, I share that. And also this is so much fun. Like what? Like let, let's, let's slow it down. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Sometimes I look back, I'm like, Oh, I wish I would have enjoyed that more. Yeah. I, I mean, on your, even on your first piece of feedback, I, all the time I'm like, why are you stressing out about this? Like this, this is not, this is in the scheme of things. This is not that big of a deal. No. Yeah. It's a good time. Yeah. These are good times. Uh, how have you challenged the status quo recently? I think been doing a lot of taking processes that we've had for a while or things that we've been having that we've had in place for a long time and just dropping it on its head and rethinking it and really challenging the rest of my team to do the same. Yeah. Um, was recently working with one of my teammates who was really struggling to change something that I had tasked her with. And so we went back and forth and gave her some ideas of how she could rethink it. And she ultimately did. And it was incredible. And she was really proud of herself because she was basically updating a system that she had created, Yeah, which it is really hard if you've built something to then take that and completely destroy it and build it again, mm -hmm. because you can't see past, you know, what you've created. And your brain is trained to go right back in. Yeah. yeah. So trying to challenge myself and everyone else on my team to just look at what we have and, you know, what is not serving us anymore and what needs to be changed and pushing all of us to try to change. Yeah. What's a recent fuck up that you've made and then how did you own it and uh, work to fix it? I thought I was giving direct feedback. <laughs> and in fact, it the message was not, which is on me, and the message was not landing. And so I gave very direct feedback and of course it is, it is, you know, what we talk about with radical candor, wanting the best for that person yeah. and really wanting to help support them. So 
I've done that a few times where I realized, hey, I may have not been as direct as I thought I was. And then I've had to correct that um, and owning that yeah. too and, and owning my part in that because that is on me to be more direct. For sure. Uh, so we're two for two on Flockstar's biggest fuck up being feedback. <laughs> I, I think we might be able to go six for six here. Uh, what project uh, at Gooder excites you the most right now? Ooh, I think what we're doing with the Flamboyance is really exciting for me. We completely changed our ambassador program and we're just about to launch that. We're about a month away. So I'm excited to see the value that we can extract from that program. Um, and hopefully what we've built is is going to set us up for success. I love uh, just getting digging into our performance marketing right now and figuring out how we can just be so much more stealth with what we're doing because I think we have so much potential there. So I get really excited about that. Uh, even though that's not like the sexy piece of what we do, I'm just really excited to continue to try to challenge yeah. what we are doing. That's cool. What's something that excites you uh, in your personal life right now that's not good related? I'm loving our run group. Yeah. Uh, we have a gooder run group on Saturdays. And I think, you know, we just had one this past Saturday and it reminded me my partner and I were talking about how it reminded us of this old run club that we used to be a part yeah. of when it was at its peak. And there was just this amazing energy and you have both kind of the new runners, the veteran runners. And I love seeing people experience the trails for the first yeah, time because cool. that is one of my passions. So I was pretty amped up on Saturday after seeing all that and amazing what you've built and getting everybody out there because that's life changing. Yeah. Well, we've built, uh, yeah, it's cool. I mean, I, I, I spent an hour talking to Kingston and you just realize how rare it is to, you spend like a full hour or more talking with the same person. Like some of my closest friends in life, right? And, it, and it's totally. like that, the ability to, to do that and share with people is, is quite magical. It really is. I've had so many seasons with running and this is like another season yeah. of running that's, that's happening. So it's really cool. Yeah. All right. Last question. Uh, what are you most proud of at your time here at Gooder? I would say when I've really been stuck on something and then I've had to kind of trudge through it and figure it out is when I have been most proud, uh, when I've said no to something <laughs> that was hard to say no to, I've been really proud of myself. So I think those moments and um, working through a problem, finding a solution and reworking the problem again yeah. when it doesn't work, that's that's what I'm really proud of. Yeah. Uh it is, it is both rewarding and and uh, uh, sometimes mind numbing. Absolutely, <laughs> it's both for sure. Awesome. Well, that's it. Thanks, Kelly, for uh, for joining us. Thanks for having me. Th uh, thanks, listeners. Uh, I'll see you in hell. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for listening to the Culture Gooder podcast. To submit questions for the podcast, learn more about our culture, and learn how you can status the quote challenge, head over to gooder.com/culture. And don't forget to subscribe to us wherever you're listening, including on YouTube, where you can now watch all of our new episodes. Who knows? You might even catch a glimpse of Carl at our headquarters if he's not already passed out at the tiki bar from all the margaritas.